Hi, I'm Nick with Calibrated Power Solutions, home of Duramax Tuner. Today on Diesel Insights, I have an interesting one for you. So when I heard the new Power Stroke was coming out with a HO motor option for 2023, I thought, one, I have to get one of those, and two, I have to see what they change between the SO and the HO model, because 25 horsepower and 120 foot-pounds of torque, which are weird numbers, by the way, they must have changed something. I mean, if you look at the price between the two options, it's not an insignificant chunk of change, so I want to see those two turbochargers, and I want to show the people those two turbochargers because I think the people are interested. Okay, first tangential rabbit hole of this video. 25 horsepower and 120 foot-pounds. Those are weird numbers, okay? So I did the math on that, and they are the only place in the rev range where you can see 25 horsepower and 120 foot-pounds of torque is at 1,100 RPM. I'm not saying they didn't add 25 horsepower across the rev range. They may very well have, but it's not like they added 120 horsepower. When you hear 120 foot-pounds, you get all excited and you're like, that's a lot of torque they added. Well, kids, it's just at 1100 RPM they did the measurement. So that's the peak added torque versus the peak added horsepower. So it's, it's not really that much different, okay? Unless you're at 1100 RPM, the truck's not gonna feel that much different. Okay, back out of the rabbit hole. Let's take a look at these two turbochargers. So on my right, I have the 2023 HO model, and on my left, I have the 2023 SO model, standard output, 475 horse, 500 horsepower on my right. I thought for sure there would be some big differences here, but when we took it apart, it's kind of a bit of a head scratcher, okay? So give you a little bit of a uh, picture of these two turbochargers. They are both basically the same architecture. They are what Garrett calls their double axle variable nozzle technology turbocharger. Those of you who've been in the diesel game for a while are used to what's called a VNT, Variable Nozzle Turbocharger. It's been in the game since 2003. This 2023 model, for the first time, not for the first time, 2020 was the first time, but in 2023 we are using what's called a double axle variable nozzle technology. Same kind of thing that's in the L5P, except the nozzles in this variable setup have an interesting slant to them. And we'll give you a nice close-up of that so you can see it and how it's different than the L5P, which uses more of a straight nozzle. But basically it's similar operation. It uses an electronic actuator to change the nozzle geometry, which gives you exhaust braking, gives you quick response turbocharger. Um, sizing on the turbochargers is almost identical. So on the compressor wheel, on the HO model, we have a 57.53 millimeter inducer. On the standard output model, we have a 57.5 millimeter inducer. Say it isn't so, Bill. Same size inducer. Exducer grows a little bit on the HO model. Okay, so we might have a little bit of a difference in trim, but the inducer is the same. Most other measurements are the same. Same 11 blade deal, uh, same 16 millimeter nose. Tip height, so the height of the tip of the compressor wheel is actually a little shorter on the HO model. Uh, four millimeter tip height versus a five millimeter tip height. And what that kind of plays to is efficiency at high pressure ratios. So places where you need a lot of boost. One of those places you might need a lot of boost is down low in the rev range when you're making that 120 extra foot pounds of torque and 25 horsepower. Let's talk about the turbine wheel. So here we get a little more of a difference and that's probably by nature with the 25 extra horsepower. So we're gonna see a little more exhaust energy. We want a little bit bigger turbine wheel. On the turbine wheel, we go from an exducer of 55.2 on the 2020 to a 55.5 on the 23. Inducer on the 2020 was 68 mil. On the 23, it's 70 mil. The inducer base, 68 on the 2020 versus 70 mil on the 23. So when I say 2020, I mean the SO model. 23 is the HO model. Uh, this is the same turbo. The SO is the same on uh, the 2023 as it's the same horsepower rating. Vein cage, so the nozzle assembly itself, no change. Um, nine millimeter vein height, 13 veins, pretty basic stuff, no difference. The exhaust housing is the same, the actuator is the same. Okay, Nick, so real cool video. You showed us a turbocharger that's basically the same and are counting views for it. Not exactly, not exactly. This is where we're gonna go down the next rabbit hole which is the SO model compressor cover versus the HO model compressor cover. Now, if you notice on the HO model, I have two ports on the top of it, and those ports are not for positive crankcase ventilation. 
they are for coolant. So there's a coolant boss in here, there's a coolant jacket in the compressor cover and coolant goes in the compressor cover, gets circulated and comes out. That is the first time I've ever seen coolant go through a compressor cover in a light duty truck application. Okay, so you spent more money on Ford's HO option and you got something for it. That's cool. It's the coolant circulated compressor cover. Now why cool a compressor cover? We know the truck has an intercooler, they both have intercoolers, why not just cool the charge air in the intercooler? I don't know for sure, okay? Ford hasn't said why they have a cooled compressor cover. But I wanna go over a few of my theories because that's what people do on YouTube. The extra boost required to make that power, especially at low RPM, is significant. And that boost needs to be cooled. Now my first hunch is that maybe the factory intercooler is at its limit and cannot do the job on the HO model. That is, it cannot control the boost air or charge air temperature on the HO model. Now why is it important to control charge air temp? If you control charge air temp, you can control boost. So if charge air temp gets out of control, then your boost system uh, cannot deliver the target air mass as requested by the ECM. The ECM is requesting a certain amount of boost pressure at a certain load. That's all well and good, but if that charge air goes out of temperature, that is, instead of 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it goes to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a different amount of air. And so in order to keep the truck doing what the ECM is asking, the engineers might have said, hmm, we really need all the air we're asking for, and we can't have a deviation, we can't have it go inconsistent, so we need to cool that charge air. And the only way to do that is either at a supplemental or separate charge air cooler or hey Bill in the back says maybe we should we should try and cool the compressor cover and use it as an intercooler so that's theory one theory two and these aren't mutually exclusive theories they can all go together if you can keep the charge air cool you can keep the boost down and if you can keep the boost down you can keep the compressor out of surge what is surge? Surge is low RPM, high load, high boost, loss of grip of the compressor wheel on the air. And when that happens, you get the cool choo 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 noise. Not so cool for bearings though. Okay, so it beats up the bearings, it's hard on the turbocharger, and it doesn't deliver air consistently to the engine. If we don't have consistent air to the engine, well, that's a whole mess of problems for emissions controls and all sorts of stuff, and guys don't like to drive trucks like that. So, we need to keep the turbocharger out of surge. Way to do that, keep the air cool. If you can keep the air cool on the other side of the turbocharger, that is the discharge side, you can keep it cool and you can keep it lower pressure. So lower temperature air is lower pressure, lower pressure is less prone to surge. Okay, so we were editing in post-production and we had the set tore down and I was walking through the turbo bay and I had another idea coming to me and I thought, it's really important we include this in the video and I don't really feel like setting the whole thing up again, so I'm just gonna do it in the studio. The theory is this. When PCV, positive crankcase ventilation, is vented to the compressor cover, uh, sometimes oil is brought into the compressor cover. Now, <clears throat> there are limits on the temperature of a compressor discharge air, and I think those limits are largely there to keep the oil that comes in through the PCV from basically glomming onto the diffuser face. Now, the diffuser face is this area here, which is an aerodynamic surface, and so, there's a very uh, thin clearance, maybe like 150 thou or 120 thou, I didn't measure it on this one, but it's probably somewhere around there, between that and the compressor cover. So you can imagine if you get a bunch of oil that comes in through the compressor inlet and then is brought around and circulated through the diffuser face into the intercooling system, that if that oil is heated to a temperature, <clears throat> say around 390 degrees, where it's gonna start cooking the oil, that that could be a problem. And that problem is that that oil will then glom on to the diffuser face, like here, right? You can see a nice clean spot here and then where the oil um, has started to kind of, I use the word glom, has started to kind of stick to the diffuser face. Now, if not a big deal on, you know, 10,000 miles or uh, intermittent use, but if you're towing and you're using that compressor constantly under that heavy load at that high temperature, 
that there's a potential that you could really start to build up that material and impact the performance of the turbocharger. Okay, so Ford has added more horsepower to this system via the engine control module. And in order to cope with that extra horsepower, Ford has added a larger turbocharger. <coughs> Ford has added a larger intercooler. <coughs> Ford has added supplemental intercooling via the compressor cover. Okay, so in summary, Ford added 25 horsepower and 120 foot-pounds to their new truck. Instead of using a bigger turbocharger, they added more intercooling via the compressor cover of their turbocharger. Cool idea. Is this the future? I don't know. I think flying cars are the future. If you're interested in making more horsepower on your 2020 plus Ford, give us a call. We can do that for you in the tune. You don't even need to water cool the compressor cover of your turbocharger to get it. I'm Nick Pregnance. This is Diesel Insights. We'll catch you on the next one with more cool stuff. Oh,